Whew. All right, so looks like we just got probably close to three inches of rain. Just kind of wanted to show you how bad it gets up here. Now the rain has really tapered off and I am completely soaked right now. And part of that reason is because this started clogging up and the water started coming over that little trench that I dug right there and started pouring through my greenhouse, washing all the gravel and all the water out, which I don't really care, you know, about the inside of the greenhouse getting wet. But that water comes pouring over the top of this and then right into my pond. Even though I built like a small little retaining wall, it was so much water coming in and it's pulling the mud and everything. It just literally started pouring into the pond. So I had to just go out here and <laughs> and retrench that in the rain. I had no choice. I had to do it in the rain to, to try to get it to, to, to reduce the amount of water coming through. I mean, it was pouring through here. So, just to kind of give you an idea on how much water has been coming in here. So I just trenched all this so it, it brought the water back. But there was so much water pouring down just a few minutes ago, five, ten minutes ago, that the water was pouring through here literally pouring through here just gushing right through coming into here and then going into this and then you know right here going into that and then pouring under the door I mean it was an immense amount of water coming in just now I mean I literally got soaked but the purpose of this video isn't to show you how much damage your rain is doing to the greenhouse the purpose is to show you a little bit about erosion control and why I planted these trees. Now I gotta kinda do this fast, because it is raining. You see I built this little mound of dirt right here. Well, let me show you why, one of the reasons why I planted these trees here. Okay, you see this river of water running? That's coming from a culvert all the way at the top of the property. Before I planted these trees, this yard used to get completely devastated with water. The first year I had my greenhouse here, it almost washed the greenhouse completely off the foundation. So I needed to create some kind of erosion control. Now you see this is a, a fast moving river right now. This is somebody's backyard and their lawn. This happens every time we get extreme rain. Give you an idea of how much water is actually coming down from this. I'm already wet so it don't matter. I just don't want my camera to get wet. Okay, this is how much water comes down their property. Rolls all the way out of that culvert, comes down. Now before I had these trees up, that water used to come all the way across my property, literally wash everything out. You couldn't have a greenhouse back here. So these trees prevented quite a bit of it. It's not perfect, water is still getting past it. But as you can see, if it wasn't for these trees as erosion control, it would be really bad. And one of the main reasons why I did that is because the more the water washes across your lawn, it starts pulling that soil downwards, eventually creating top stress on the top part of your foundation, eventually causing your foundation to shift and move. So I needed to start eliminating this massive amount of water flowing at least across my property and keep it on this side into a direct stream. And you can see all the water build up back there. I don't care about back here. I just don't want it running across my back, my yard, pulling, you know, you can see the water is dirty, right? You know why it's dirty? Because it's pulling away the mud. And so, as it's pulling away the mud, it's pulling your, your soil down the hill. As it does that, your foundation shifts. So we're trying to eliminate that from happening. And it, it started showing signs of it. Believe it or not, I'm starting to get, I started getting cracks in my foundation. So I needed to keep that water off of the back of my land. Look at this. My camera's soaked too right now. Look at all this water. I mean, this is, you don't have any idea. I'm not even showing you what it looked like about five minutes ago. These trees are literally soaking all this water up. Look at my garden in here. This is why I'm not planting in this garden this year inside by my chicken coop here. Look at this, look at all that water coming across the garden. Look at it, it's pouring out of here like a river. So this is one of the reasons why 
I'm not um, planting a garden out this year was actually a good move. The upper garden would have been all right. But just to kind of show you how much water actually came down out of this. I mean, this, is, this isn't that common, but it does happen. Okay, this is my neighbor's property in the back. You see that river back there? That's just a, that's a culvert. That's an overflow culvert. That for all the water coming down from the end, from the top of the mountain, goes into this culvert, fills up, and it forms a little lake down there. You can almost go fishing down there. So that's all the water coming down from the mountain. It hits that culvert and drains off. Look at the beautiful clouds out in the background. Isn't that beautiful? Smoky Hills of the Appalachian Mountains. But that's where the water goes. It goes down and across. And you can see how much water is just coming through my yard right now. So like I say, I try to control the erosion problem from, because I'm on a hill. One of the ways to do it is to keep the water off your property. The other way to do it is there's a, there's a pipe from the runoff in the street, and that's where a lot of this water comes from. If they would have just piped that pipe all the way down the side of this property and dump it out right here, that would solve the whole problem. You wouldn't have to worry about all of this stuff. But because that water isn't piped underground, it runs across the surface of the ground, and that causes a lot of damage to your surface soil. It's to, what, it, what happens is the soil begins to push downhill. As the soil pushes downhill very slightly, it starts pulling your house down with it. So that's very bad if you have water coming across your property like this. I mean, you can see the ground is just literally drenched. I'm walking in water right now. See this? I had to do this in order for me to get the water away from my greenhouse because it was starting to flood the inside of my greenhouse. I mean, look how much water is coming down here. Most of this is all underground water. See all this? See how soggy it is? This is all coming out from, you know, underneath my, my house. <laughs> you know, if it rained like that for a month, solid, my house would completely slide downhill. That's how you get mudslides. When, when the ground gets too soft and, it, and the roots can't hold it back anymore, it just slides forwards. And that's a very serious issue to worry about when you live on a hill, whether it's a house that's been there for 70 years or not. It can, at any point, if you get enough rain, it can actually cause your house to slide downhill, and you certainly don't want that. So like I say, one of the ways to avoid that is simply, as you can see, I added these, these pine trees for privacy, but they also serve and serve the purpose of erosion control. So it's hard for the water to get past those roots and then now it does still come up over here down this way here You could still you could still see the water coming up See how it's still kind of flowing through here when it gets really deep Kind of comes through and then you can see it run along the surface of the ground and then it hits that mud bank that I created right there I built that mud bank if I didn't put that mud bank in there that pond would be filled with mud right now In fact, I just took out two wheelbarrows full of mud from the last two years from the years prior to this so I just cleaned this pond out now it started getting muddy again and that was because the water was coming into the center of my greenhouse and pouring right through hitting that those blocks over there and then going over the blocks and into the pond and pulling in all the mud and dirt and everything all over again so in order for me to, to have control that I had to go in the front of the greenhouse and retrench that thing and keep that water down a little bit it got really bad a minute ago. I mean, we got, I don't know, three inches of rain in the last 20 minutes. It was just an absolute deluge, and it was consistent, and it was enough to cause this kind of problem. Now, the inside of my house is flooding, too. All the sump pumps are kicking on. You can see all the slugs. Look at all the slugs on my greenhouse trying to get out of the water. I don't know if you can see this. I can't see how my camera is all wet. You see all the slugs? Look at all the slugs. I should come out here with a pail and catch them all. That way I get rid of these things. Look, they're all over my greenhouse. They're trying to get away from the water. Slugs don't like the water. I'm going to do that too, actually. I'm going to get rid of them. Look, they're all over the place. They're over there. They're up here. They're on this. Everywhere. Yeah, I should go on a slug hunt. See how many slugs we can get. Yeah, but that's why uh, 
that's one of the reasons why I put these trees up. Because when I first started building this greenhouse, I seen the water coming down. I said, this is going to be a problem. It's going to wash my greenhouse out every single time it rains. So when I got these trees up, it didn't do that much in the beginning. But now that these trees are big and strong, you can see that it's really holding back in the water. Now everything's kind of washed out already. So you're not, the sun's coming out now. and So you're not really going to see it like it was when I was just out here a minute ago. But I do want to show you how bad it gets on this side here. If I can find an opening in here. And there is an opening somewhere. It's just been raining so hard. I mean, look at the amount of water that comes out of that pipe. So, if you have a situation where there is, for example, uh, up at the top of my house is a road. And that road has multiple pipes that come off and they go into front of people's properties. So this road has a culvert on their side of the property, right on this tree line. Then there's another pipe over there. That guy plugged that one off. The, the people in that house over there, there's a house, my neighbor right there. The old guy that was there before, he plugged that pipe off so the water don't come across his property no more. Because it was literally washing this house away. And then there was another pipe over there and so on and so on. So there's all these pipes that come off the road and when it rains, when it rains really hard, it, it's very bad like you see here. And so those pipes run all that water off down and then across your properties and spreads out. Had these trees not been here right now, I don't know how serious, severe the damage would be to my greenhouse. You probably would wipe the greenhouse out. It would probably be sinking and everything else. So. Thank God that I have these trees, but if you have a situation, is what I'm trying to say, where it's something similar, where you have a road in front of your house, you're collecting road water, and then there's these road pipes, these water drainage pipes coming off to drain off across the top of your property, consider doing what I did as an option. You know, build a, a uh, privacy fence with trees. Nigras are good. You go with the green giants. You want something that's going to make a hard root base. So what happens is, is as that water comes out of that pipe on the other side of the trees, it's like maybe two feet on the other side of the trees. I'll see if I can show it to you. I don't really, I'm soaking wet. I want people looking out the window at me and stuff, you know. <laughs> They're looking at me walk around in the rain and stuff. I'm like a jungle guy up here, you know. Let me just show you. Just trying to give you a heads up as to how to deal with ra heavy rainwater if you got this on your property. You don't always have to spend fourteen thousand dollars in piping to pipe the water out you can actually just use trees for erosion control okay here's the pipe I'm talking about you see that pipe when that pipe is running full it's bad See how it runs? And because they closed off the other pipe over there on the other side, and it's not going across to my other neighbor's property, that water ends up accumulating in front of my house right here, across the whole front of my house. And because of that reason, the water ends up in my basement. My lower level, it's not really a basement, but the lower level, it ends up with uh, flooding and down on my lower level. So, because of that reason, I, I have a water problem because he closed off that pipe, which by law he wasn't supposed to do that, but he did it anyway. Instead of running the pipe and spending the money to run, you know, eight or ten inch PVC pipe all the way down to the end of the property to, to drain that water away, he didn't want to spend that kind of money. So he, he closed it off, and now all the water floods on my property and floods. He diverted the water to our properties, my property, people next door, people on the other side. So we, we're getting all that water. He doesn't get a drop of that water. We get it all. So no way to prove it. Selling the house, don't care. It's not my problem anymore. But anyway, that's how I deal with erosion control. You know, it's, it's, if you live on a hill and you don't control that water that's coming off the hill, 
the hydrology of that water is going to do damage to your house. It's going to cause problems eventually like that. You're going to start to see cracks and stuff in your foundation. If you don't control it now, that problem will definitely magnify. That water needs to be averted away from the front of your property or away from the higher part of your property where the hill is. Because that, when that soil gets wet with all that mud, it pushes against your foundation like a bulldozer. And believe me when I tell you, you're, you're not, no bulldozer in the world has the strength of wet, muddy soil. It'll literally topple a house. So it's definitely a concern that you need to be aware of and control the direction of water coming across your property. Yes, the water, main water problem is all the way down there. But even still, as that dirt slides forwards and pushes down, it's pulling this dirt, is pushing down with it. As this dirt pulls down with it, the dirt up at the top of the property starts pulling down and eventually pulling your whole house and distorting your sidewalks and twisting things. And that's what ends up happening. Water is very destructive. And it's the, the force of water is, you can't even imagine how powerful water really is until you start dealing with it. Water is a very powerful part of Mother Nature. All right, so plant your trees for erosion control. Keep the, it'll keep the water back on one side. It probably wouldn't have hurt if I built the dirt mound in front on the other side by the, by the tree base all the way down, like piled up rock and dirt around that and then put the tree, you know, when they were small, but I didn't do any of that. I didn't even plant these trees. A company came in and planted all these trees on my property, so. But I'm gonna tell you, it paid itself off now. You see how I kept the water that stream of waters before these trees were here that water was all the way across the back of my yard going right past my greenhouse and everything my greenhouse would be totally flooded and devastated right now yeah it does get a little bit of water coming in there but nothing what it was before it was so much worse it was unbelievable so i figured i'd share that with you guys and uh, i know it's a little bit of a rant for me but it doesn't happen that often but when it does happen it's very destructive this is the water side of the destruction of erosion. I'll do another video on what ice does and how destructive ice is on the, on the exterior parts of your house as well. I'll wait to the winter time for that and I'll show you how destructive ice is. But the water part, that's what this video is about, erosion control. So you gotta control the amount of water coming across the surface of your property so it doesn't, you want to get that water away. You don't want that soil to become waterlogged because eventually what could happen, and it doesn't look like it's a steep enough plane to happen, but it could happen if it gets wet enough, that whole property can slide forwards. This whole thing, like an avalanche, the whole thing can slip. There's a rock below this. At some point, there's some kind of a rock below this, and this can detach from that rock and slide forwards, and it'll just... You don't want that to happen. You need to get the water off the mountain if you don't want that kind of a situation. So like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.